questions about by making a hammock out of a poncho, can I also make a tarp cover out of a poncho that's the same size? So, so in order to do that, you need another poncho. Just one right here. Any of them will work. First of all, you'll see that there is a little curvature when you hang a hammock. That curvature is shortening how long it is end to end. What you need to do is throw the other poncho over top of the poncho I'm using for a hammock. So the deal here is you can buy these shock cord loops from us, which is a eighth inch shock cord with a cord lock. And anywhere you need to use it, you have a kind of like an adjustable rubber band, basically. All right. And every poncho on the ham at the bottoms, in the very middle is a tie-out tab. And this is for a tarp tie-out. So what we want to do, we want to go above, we to go above here. We want to put the shock cord loop through there, go around both of these. Well, it depends on, you're going around your suspension, whatever it is. This is a quick connect, so it's two ends of a Dyneema cord. So now what I want to do, I go around there and I want to cinch that down tight, pull it snug. <clears throat> and then that you actually want to put it down like this because it becomes kind of a drip loop. Water running down the string here, the cord will hit that and then run down and drip off the bottom. So that's one end secured. Granted, it's barely covering, but it is covering. Okay, now we're on the other end. We put this cord loop, shock cord loop through there. Pull up so that you're, we you want to cinch down. We're well, cinching down like right here, okay? We pull it up like that. Put our cord lock through the loop. Pull it down, squeeze your cord lock, just pull. So you're snugging that up there nice and tight. So technically I've now covered my hammock completely just doing that alone. Now I do, I do want to do something with this hood because I don't want water, rain or whatever coming through there. You notice the hood does have a snap on it and there's another snap on the chest. What we want to do is snap that over that then we can draw that hood, the, the drawstring the rest of the way in. The snap there just kind of keeps that op over the top of the remaining part of the opening right there. So you can just do that. Now, you don't really want this being down in a, down in a basin because the water will run in there and it will seep through there. So you do want this to be elevated in some way or the other thing i've done is put a rock or a little pine cone in the hood then tie it off right there and just pull up a little bit like i say you don't have to put a lot of tension on it just you're just holding it up that's all you're doing holding it up a little bit all right now i can just pick up a pine cone or something like that Loosen this up a little bit and shove it up inside the hood here. Feel around for the peak of it is right there. Okay. Now I just kind of draw that in like that. Now then I can go around with another. These, these little uh, shock cord things are pretty handy. I can tie a knot or I can draw it like that. You know, that'll work just fine. I do have another little trick. 
I want to show though. If I put, I don't know if I'm going to need it here, but if I put another cord lock on here, so I have two of them. All right, so now we go around here. The closest cord lock in, I'll just slide that down. Now I'm going to run my ridge line through here and I can adjust the height by this cord lock. Now obviously you can do all that, just tying knots and stuff, but if you're lazy like me. So I'm just gonna come across here, tie me off a little hitch. I do it with two finger style, around. I'm trying to show you here, hook that with my little finger and pull on it, that loop. Just keep pulling. Kind of dress it out. Now I've got a slippery hitch right here. Pull on that tag and it's undone. And this will hold plenty of weight right there. Now one thing I like about the quick connect cord here and the daisy chain webbing, it's easily adjustable. I've already adjusted my hammock to where I want it. So now I can come along and I can just tie off to this toggle right here. See, I've done right there. Just go around it like that. Or I can put this, I can open a loop right here. And I can pull my cord right, I can pull my cord right through there, however I want. And now I can just tie a taut line so i'll probably well i can come wherever come up through once come up through twice kind of pull that over there a little bit and we're going to go to the outside and Okay, so now, now I can slide this to, and slide this to tension my ridge line however I need it. Now you don't want to get this too far forward because it'll pull up on the mouth of this that might open you just a little opening where the hood opening is right here. So. If you have to air, you want to air a little towards the back so that you're not opening up the front part of this. And so, okay, so here I am. So I can slide this toggle down a little, raise the hood up. We just want this not to be down in. If it's level or above, we're good. That's all we need. And again, we're using the same size uh, poncho for a tarp as we're using the same size poncho for the hammock. So we're gonna see that we can cover pretty nicely with the same deal. So you could carry two ponchos and have coverage, poncho, and hammock all together. Now technically you could just do that. Just pull the hood up a little bit. You've got your ends done. Don't even do anything with the bottom edges. No staking it out or anything like that. A lot of times that'll work. But if the storm is windy, you're probably going to need to do a little bit of tying out with a tarp kit or something. Some cordage tied off somewhere, some tent stakes, that sort of thing. So let me show you a little about that. So you can take something like this carabiner right here. And if you have two of those, you can clip through these tie-out tabs on the corners right here, hanging down. See that right there? Now the wind can't pull that over the top. If you just do that on both ends, on this foot end and the head end, most likely that's all you'd have to do is just clip the two ends, do nothing else and you're good. How personally I like to be a little more open 
and clipping in like this, but it's a quick, easy way to do it without taking hardly anything extra with you. So, I mean, that is def that's a simple little option. So, the other way to do that, you know, the probably the ultimate way to do this would be to tie out the four corners and then you're fanning it out more. You got more air circulation in there. You know, probably be a little more comfortable, a little more open. So let me show you how to do that. We do have a little, well, we have a, we have a tarp kit that will work, which is tent stakes and parachute cord. Or the way I like to do it is this, actually I have a couple extra things in here, but. We have this little ultralight tarp kit, which which weighs like three or four ounces. Comes with six shock cord loops. Comes with four East Aluminum six inch tent stakes, each having eight feet of Dyneema twine with a, with a hookworm on it, which makes it so you're not really worrying about tying knots. Easy to adjust, holds really well. That sort of thing and it comes with a set of ridge line cords as well 15 feet each which we don't need here I could have used one of them right here but I didn't so the first thing you want to do is the shock cord loops you want to put those on every corner tab or wherever you want to tie a stake to all right so here's one of our tie outs so what we do is we just shove just shove it through there and I like to take so this end here is our connector that connects it all together so what I want to do is just put I just want to pull the other end the loop part through and that draws that little connector part there and gives you kind of a free end right here to work with and that's where we're going to clip our hookworm from our tent stake I know I'm going to want to not somewhere, I don't know, say right here somewhere. Put that in. Like that, okay? Now I'm going to fasten the hookworm to the shock cord right here. Okay, you're going to see right here, I'm taking the hook part of the hookworm. You pull just a little bit, it'll kind of snap in there. There's a little bump on there. That way it kind of holds it in place so it doesn't come off of there. Okay, now we just pull tension on this. And at first you don't want to pull a lot. You just snug it up just enough because as you go around the four corners, you want to kind of adjust that later on. Okay, let's see if I can do this where you can see it. So see the hole in the hookworm is our kind of pulley point where we're pulling tension, you see that? The shock cord part, that gives us some uh, kind of shock relief from the wind pulling hard on it, okay? Now to hold our adjustment here, you see this, the hookworm has, see the hookworm has a kind of a little bump right here, it's a little bigger right there in the middle. All we're going to do is put a half hitch over that. Now I said you weren't going to have to do any knots, but I lied. It's hardly even a knot almost. <laughs> so what you do, and I'm having to kind of hold this a little different just so I can keep it free so you can see. What I like to do is just take my finger and thumb right here and just roll it. Just twist a little bit. Look what that did. That just made, that just made an eye in this, right? Okay. All I'm going to do is put that eye over the hook, hookworm right there. So I am now, I am now tensioned. See that? Now, whenever at the end, when I want to adjust that and tighten it up a little, all I do is pull on the free end here and watch what it does. It just pulled that half hitch off of the 
end of the hookworm. Okay, so now I can pull a little tighter if I want to. Flip that eye over there. That's it. See how simple that is? Nothing to worry about there. So we do that on all the corners and we're good to go. Okay, so now you can see we have indeed used the same size poncho as a tarp cover as the poncho we're using underneath here for the hammock. We've got full coverage. We use the tarp kit, in this case ultralight tarp kit to tie it out, to string it out. One other thing I often like to do is get a stick about this long and put in here and put another little tie out here just to hold this up a little because I like to kind of see out a little. <laughs> that's totally optional, but that's a Perry preference right there. I like doing that. Where we, we've tied those off, I can pull back a little now. So now that we've kind of got everything in place. So now you see we've got a nice line here. We're totally covered. And it's just that simple. Now you don't have to use an ultralight tarp kit. You can use whatever cords you want, whatever stakes you want. You might already have something. Good to go. One thing to note is if you start tying down really hard here, just remember, I mean the hood here is plenty strong, but the hood is not really a load bearing thing. So you don't want to really like, really be pulling hard against all that. We have had where little kids, when this is a hammock, little kids, two or three little kids will stand in the hood and bounce around it. Anyway, this is not a load bearing situation right here. You're just, you're just kind of holding everything up just to keep it so the water runs out. So now if we look up inside of there, you see we've got, got a couple, two or three, two and a half inches of clearance between the end of our hammock and our, uh, tarp and once again I do want to kind of as I do that I want this can't do it with one hand uh, kind of want this to hang right down if I had both hands available I just walk that around just a little bit so there we are we're coming down here you see we're tied off down here to our tent stake on four corners like that we've got our pine cone inside of here. You can use a cord or the, I always have a lot of these shock cord loops around anyway, but you know, whatever works. We come on up here and on this end, you know, see we're kind of looking at the same deal again. We got some room up inside of there. And again, we're anchored out down here. All that's adjustable very easily. So it's actually, it's very, very realistic to say I could take two ponchos of the same size and make a hammock and a tarp for it out of those two ponchos. Okay, now let me get inside of here. Here's another nice thing about the shock cords that I've got this thing tied out with. So I can pull on it a little bit and they can have some give where if I was rigidly anchored out, I couldn't really pull it up like this. I'd have to kind of crawl up in there. So because I have that give with the shock cords out of the uh, ultralight tarp kit, it makes it easy to get in and out. I'm going to just uh, throw my blanket out. So anyway, here I am inside of here. Like I say, it is a little close, you might say. I mean, it's, but nothing's laying on me. So, you know, I am good. But now you can kind of see the reason why I like to kind of, I like to tie out that one right there. Cause that just kind of opens things up a little. Sometimes I'll do it on both sides. 
So I have an airflow kind of crossways this way. But it's all, you know, it depends on how involved you want to get. <laughs> so anyway, you can see this is uh, it's pretty simple. Now you can see that even, I mean, we're really tight the way we're doing this, right? Um, so even at that, you know, I'm still, I don't have anything laying on my face here. But this is so doable, you know, it's kind of, I like to carry two ponchos. A lot of times I'll have this top poncho be a sill, a super UL. So it's, you know, it's like nine ounces for your canopy, right? And I could have, I could have another super UL that I'm laying in. So I'm, I'm like 18 ounces for my hammock and my tarp cover. And I throw... 